Well, it's good to see everybody out. Some of you are smiling, some of you are frowning, but that's okay. No matter what, we love you. We're so thrilled you're here. Uh, Join me in prayer as we go into our worship through understanding time. We got our kids' corners up there, but this is our worship through understanding time. Oh, it's different on the back screen. Uh, So I'm trying to get to prayer here. Can you tell? Father, we thank you for giving us uh, another opportunity to to discover your direction in our life, uh, to apply your son's ways, and to be energized by your spirit. I pray that each of us will now set our minds, our hearts, and our spirit to your message. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, as I say every week at this time, uh, welcome uh, and welcome to FBC Church of Morgan County. If you're new here, either on Facebook or here uh, in the sanctuary, uh, welcome. We're thrilled that all of you chose to be with us this morning. Today, we will begin our message in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And as you're turning there, we'll turn there as quick as we can. <laughs> Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. There we go. Uh, We have new software. It's the first weekend, so uh, thank you for having patience with us on that. Patience. Uh, Well, back one. We're not there yet. (laughs) Can you get there? You go. (laughs) Now, as you're turning there, let's get back on track. I want to say hello to our video audience, and as always, we're thrilled that you're able to leverage technology and join us. Uh, We do encourage everyone who is viewing via Facebook. Zealand, so thank you for clicking on share and letting people know what we're doing here at the church. Well, let me say this. In uh, the Christian faith, uh, and if you recall, to be a Christian, one uh, must humble themselves and repent. We preached on this two weeks ago. One must repent along with placing your faith. Everybody say faith. Now, understand this, that you have the uh, choice to put your faith anywhere. God has given you that privilege, that honor, and you can place your faith anywhere. But for us as Christians, we need to understand that first we must repent, and along with our faith in Jesus, we must point our faith through Jesus and put it through Jesus to uh, is what it takes to experience the spiritual birth. And last week we talked about being born again, which is almost a foreign uh, 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 thought these days, but it's just being spiritually born. And there is no other way of becoming a Christian. Now, once you are born, you've made that commitment, you've repented, you've now you're in the direction of Jesus, and you said, you know what, I'm going to put my faith through Jesus. The question is, now what? Notice when you repent, you've done this from here to here, but you really haven't moved anywhere. You've just turned around and made a commitment. Now what? Well, our Lord and Savior answers this question and gives us a command, if you will, if you will and an identity which defines now what? What do we do? And for the rest of life, what we do is we follow Jesus and we become fishers of people. This morning, I want to talk to you about the command of Jesus, follow me, and what it means to be fishers of people. The message this morning is simply titled, Go Fish. Go with me to the third command in our series, uh, the series being Believe Again in the Commands of Jesus, How to Love God and Others. Two weeks ago, we were in Matthew 4, and here we are again. Two weeks ago, Jesus was preaching, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, in chapter 4 here, Matthew chapter 4, we see Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee. And he notices two brothers, Simon Peter and Andrew, fishing. 
And Jesus calls out to them and says this. Come, follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out to fish for people. Now notice this. At once. They left their priorities. They left their own goals. They left their own resources. They left their nets and they, they followed Jesus. At once, we have to hear that, they left their nets and followed Jesus. From the time I can remember until I was well into my 17th year of my life, every summer, without fail, I would go camping with my grandparents. Now, thinking about it, it was quite comical where we would camp. And my grandfather would always say, we live in the most beautiful place in the world, San Diego. Why would we camp anyplace else? So every year, we would pack up the camper, travel 14 minutes and 23 seconds. I checked it on the GPS. From my grandparents' home to Mission Bay, and that's where SeaWorld is and all the activity kind of in San Diego, and enjoy each other's company for two weeks. Now, every year, it was the same thing, uh, the same routine, if you will. In the morning, we would have breakfast. Uh, we would walk a few feet to the bay, if you will, and spend the whole day at the beach. And at dusk, we would go back to the camper and we would enjoy dinner and we would play uh, some games. Now, at, uh, we'd play games and, of course, go to bed. Now, at game time, every night, my sweet, dear grandmother would ask me, and I know my grandfather hated this question, what game do you want to play, Drake? My grandma would ask me. And without fail, I would say, go fish. How many of you are familiar with the game Go Fish? Sure, it's a, it's a very uh, familiar game, and it's a simple game. The first thing you do is you deal five or seven cards, uh, cards to the players, depending on how many people you would have. And uh, the rest of the deck that you would have is called the lake or the pool, so that people that are playing can go fish in the lake. You recall the game. It's a simple, simple game. And I loved it. The simpler, the better. Amen? <laughs> that's our new toy. Did you see that? I love it. For you new people, you're like, oh, that's, that's new for us. We, that's the first time we did that, so we're pretty excited about those things. <laughs> Doesn't take much, does it? We're simple people. It was a simple game. And of course, I loved it. And just like the game, Jesus, uh, uh, following Jesus and being fishers of men is not that hard if one thinks about it. Jesus is very clear with his words and the Great Commission that he instructs all of his believers to go fish. Now, if you speak to many Christians today, most would say they know of the command that Jesus gives after we become a Christian, follow me. And they would even say, I know I'm supposed to be fishers of people and that Jesus instructs me to go fish. However, knowing and understanding are two different things. Now, observing many Christians today and uh, actions and words today, it's obvious they have really no idea of what it means to fish for people as Jesus fished for, uh, for people. It's quite clear most don't understand what it means to go fish. Paul Harvey Anybody remember Paul Harvey, who was, well known, who was a well-known American broadcaster for over five decades. For you that have never heard of his name, he was quite famous. And he was famous for his The Red 
rest of the story segment uh, that he would share, uh, I believe, weekly. And he said this, we, meaning Christians, have drifted away from being fishers of men to being keepers of the aquarium. Meaning, uh, followers of Christ care little about drawing people into the faith as Jesus did and are more worried about the buildings and, and the money and the resources. They are more worried about their kingdom rather than God's. Now, let me say this. I'm not here to pick on us, but we understand we've kind of unintentionally ended up exactly where Paul Harvey has said we have ended up becoming keepers of the aquarium. And rather than loving people as Jesus loved people, uh, we tend to use things, excuse me, we tend to use people and love things rather than the other way around. You see, many love things and use people rather than love people and use things. If you examine many Christians' lives today, it wouldn't take long to see that their priorities point to building things, uh, building up things rather than developing uh, those relationships with other people and with God. In many Christian marriages, uh, in, in our homes and churches today, unfortunately, our love for God and people in implying Jesus' ways or his commands are misplaced. Now, to follow Christ is to set aside our own goals, uh, our own pleasure, and to uh, elevate the purposes for which God created us to carry out. We must place God's purposes first, then man's purpose. Notice I didn't say man's purpose is completely wrong. It's when man's purpose is priority and God is somewhere in the back burner, on the back burner. You see, uh, we must have God's priorities first and then man's priority to truly experience fulfillment in this life. In this life. Now, the purpose of God is this, to have a personal relationship with him and to make disciples, teaching them to obey God's command and follow the true light. Everybody say light. Light, light of Jesus. You see, Jesus is the light of the world, and as we follow him, we will take on his brightness, and we will become uh, the light in this very dark world. In fact, the darker, the better. Are you with me this morning? It is the light, that same brightness Jesus used, that we must use to draw people into us. And understand that Jesus fished for people with light, never darkness. And just like Jesus, we are to use the light to fish for people. Go fish. This morning, I don't know if you realize this or not, but the light of Jesus calls all people, every last person throughout history, to be fishers of men. Jesus is God, and we make no apology for that, the ultimate light, capital, capital L, capital I, capital T, capital G, H, T. That wasn't planned. I just lost my thought. I can't spell light. Dave, come up here. You need to finish this message. <laughs> Jesus is that ultimate light because he created all people and then came to, to shed, I'm, I'm going to have to get out of this now. It's in my head. It's, that was funny. I'm, I'm going to have to remember this because I'm going to use it in another message. Uh, and be, uh, show, where am I at? Uh, so they, okay, here we go. Let me start again. Here we go in my notes. Where am I at? There is Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. There he is the ultimate light. And because he created all people uh, and then uh, came to earth to shed his blood. That's what I wanted to say for them. So uh, they, uh, so that they could be 
a means to go back to, or excuse me, they can reconcile themselves with the light and actually go back and be light for themselves. That's what I wanted to say. Go fish. Amen. However, when it comes to all of the people, know this. Most will not understand the calling. Most human beings will not understand this calling. Why? Because, if you think about it, most are swimming deep down in the lake of their own confusion. In man's darkness, both in and out of the church, to truly see the light that sits over the lake of their life, that truly is the source of all life. But that's okay. Because, if you recall, Jesus came not to call the self-righteous or the righteous. He came for sinners. For those that want to lift up their heads to see the eternal light outside of themselves. Luke 5.32 gives testimony to this. I have not come to call of the righteous, but sinners to repentance. To follow Jesus means like Peter and Andrew in our core verse this morning, to leave our own boats and nets, meaning leaving our own selfish love, our own selfish ways, our own goals, our own priorities behind and exchange them for Jesus' uh, goals and affection and priorities. Let's not be like the rich, spoiled ruler that we read about in Mark 10, who denied leaving his priority, his love for money, and his resources behind to follow Jesus. Let's be like Peter and Andrew, excuse me, Peter and Andrew, who at once gave up their own way of fishing to turn their lives over to fish the way Jesus fished. To fish in a more meaningful, worthwhile, and exciting way. Who here is excited about fishing for people and doing it uh, Jesus' way? So now with that, though, the question is, what does fishing like God, excuse me, like Jesus, look like? And how does fishing for men even relate to following Christ? So glad you asked, Rich. <laughs> what does that look like? As you know, if you've been here, I love to fish. And in our day and age, the common image or expression of the fisherman, if you will, is someone who uses uh, fishing poles to cast uh, a hook and a bait uh, and bait out into the streams or a lake. We call this the hook and bait method or technique. However, please understand, this is not how they typically fished in Jesus' day. In the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, they caught fish, the expert fishermen, with nets, and they did so at night. The darker, the better. Luke 5.5 5 shares this. This is why we know this. It says, And Simon, that's Peter, answering, said unto him, or excuse me, unto him, Master Jesus, we have toiled all night. They fished at night and have taken nothing in. But Peter said this, or Simon Peter, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So we have darkness and nets that the Bible says, yes, this is definitely the way they fish. And there's a whole message there. It's another time, another place. But just wanted you to see that darkness and the nets. Now, why would these seasoned fishermen work at night to catch fish? Well, because they would use a very powerful and effective method, light. Fish are attracted to light. And we are attracted, we uh, people are attracted to the light. The brighter the light, the more fish are attracted to uh, the light and to the net. 
And these fishermen would put a light, if you can imagine this, over the water in the middle of the night. And again, darker the better. And then surround the fish that came to it with nets. And this is a very meek way to fish. It's a gentler way to fish. Where with hooks and baits is aggressive, obnoxious. And so Jesus fished with light and nets, and we are to be like Jesus. Understand that we must apply this analogy of fishing to draw people to us. And we must use the, uh, the law of attraction, if you will. That's the Father's direction that Jesus used to draw people to us in all of our relationships. Not just here on Sunday morning, but all of our relationship. Jesus used light, and of course, Jesus is the light, and we must use that light. John 8, 12, let me remind you of this verse again. It says this, I am, Jesus said, uh, excuse me, th uh, then spake, there's King James, Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of, what's the next words? A couple words, life. Jesus' followers, once drawn into the light and accept it, now become light themselves, and this light must increase, and the brighter, the better. The light of every believer is the bright presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Let me ask you, how bright is your light this morning? And is it attracting people to you, or when they see you, they duck and cover? Walmart, bring, you bring them. Uh-oh. Recall that Jesus' mission is turning us around so that the world can experience the light through us. And we see this testimony in 2 Corinthians 4, 5, uh, uh, verse 6 and 7. For God, who com uh, commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But look at this. But, he, but we have this treasure in our hearts, in our earthly vessels, in our body, our hearts. That's our motive. That's our desire. That's the energy that keeps us alive, that vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Oh, see the truth in that this morning. Our responsibility, like the moon to the sun, is to reflect the light of the sun so that we will attract sinners to the kingdom of God. And we ourselves are not the sun, S-O-N, Jesus, but the reflection of him in this very dark world. The darker, the better. The light that Christ wants to give every one of us is the direct light of his spirit, the Holy Spirit, his divine attitude, his divine energy, which is the light of God that will draw people to you. As fishers of men for Christ, it is important to understand that we fish with light and nets, not hook and bait. When a Christian or a church decides to use uh, a bait and hook method, understand this. It is a very deceptive way to fish. And this type of fishing uh, requires a concealment, deception of that hook with the bait on it so that fish aren't uh, aware of what it is until it's too late. They have been tricked. And this is a very dark way to fish and it is very unproductive and dishonest. When a church and a Christian uses similar tactics to attract a lost person, if you will, the bait and the hook technique, it usually results in resentment and anger towards the gospel and Christian faith. Once people believe they have been tricked and reeled in, guess that's why we're not hiding anything from anybody. We are who we are. We don't use dark tactics. 
We use the light of Jesus to reel people in. And fishing like Jesus requires us to use light, meaning we must use his love, we must use his generosity, we must use his discernment, we must use his discretion, we must use his grace, we must use his flexibility, we must use the virtues of Jesus to draw people in. We have to understand it is Jesus' light that will draw people to us. And not just us as a church, but you as an individual, as a married couple, as a family, as a, a community, uh, as you go out to work, uh, as you uh, w- work and live in the community, it's the light. It is no small decision to follow Jesus. To become experts in fishing for people so that they can enjoy the rewarding and thriving life Jesus offers in all dimensions of life. As believers uh, of Christ, we are commanded to follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And with the meekness, rather than obnoxiousness and meanness and angry, with the meekness of Jesus, we will draw people in so that they will become children of light themselves and become meek fishers of people. Now, as your pastor this morning, I encourage every one of you to follow Jesus and go fish. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning uh, with your word in place, with the message And I pray that uh, at this point, come and breathe, because we know here it's nothing to do with us. We just want to be obedient with our abilities, with our gifts, with who we are. We ask you to come and breathe on that. And Lord, we give you all the glory through this message this morning. Guide us and direct us now. In the name of Jesus, amen.